Hey everyone, I'm the Taylorette, a historical customer and creative sewist, and today I am going to be working with this red fabric, which will be super fun because I'm planning on making a Civil War dress. I'm a little up in, up in the air of whether I want to make a ball gown or if I want to make a day dress or an evening dress, but that all depends on how much fabric I have left over. This is 100% silk, so I'm going to make the skirt and I'll be doing box pleats out of the skirt because I just feel like that makes it look nice and crispy. I'm gonna be focusing on box pleats with this fabric and the next video will be on trimming up the skirt. Okay, so here's the deal. I plan on using a 160 inch circumference hoop skirt. So I'm using the largest hoop skirt that I have. So I wanna make it so that it's not gathered too much on top of the hoop. So I think what I'm going to do is I will do 180 inches or maybe 175 inches just to give it a little bit of room so it's not completely cupping it. So with 180, that means that I'll need five yards of this fabric because I am going to do it the length of the, of the fabric of the yardage. And this may be not period correct, but I plan on actually just doing one big piece and doing one seam down the back of the skirt. So there won't be more than one seam. So cutting out my skirt is going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy because all I have to do is literally just cut it with the length of the yardage. So I'm gonna use my cutting mat and lay it out on that like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean off this edge and make it a clean straight edge. So now that I have my clean edge over here, I'm gonna measure five yards. Okay, so one yard. Five yards. Mark that with a pin. And then I'm gonna make a clean cut on that pin. Fold this over. Now what I might do is I'm gonna move it over maybe a little bit more and give a little extra space just in case I wanna put a petticoat underneath. So I'm making a little bit tad wider, a little extra inches in there. Here we go. And this is how wide my skirt is going to be is all of this yardage going all the way around the skirt so that'll be fine so before i determine how long i want my skirt i'm actually going to measure so i measured on my mannequin the length of my waist to the floor and then i put the hoop skirt over that so i'm going to measure and see how long from the waist to the floor with the hoop skirt because the hoop skirt will make a difference in the length you can't just measure your waist to floor and expect that that's going to be the measurement of the hoop skirt because the hoop comes out and it creates more inches so you're going to want to measure with the hoop skirt on so i measure from my natural waist which is just under your rib you'll just see my other video i'll put a link in below in how to measure from waist to floor um, here is my measurement so it looks like Looks like I'm a 46 from waist to floor with this hoop skirt on. So normally from waist to floor, I would be a 44 inch, I'm 44 inches from just under my last rib, which is your natural waist to the floor. But with the hoop skirt on, I'm actually a 46. So it makes a huge difference. Two inches can make a difference because then it'll start floating off the floor and you don't want that. It'll start to look a little bit cheap and not as quality. And here I'm folding it lengthwise along the selvage so that I can cut the length of the skirt. And I'll show you that in a minute here. Okay, so now I'm ready to chop my fabric off. The length of the skirt is gonna be from selvage to selvage. So selvage to selvage, it's a 55 inch wide fabric and I want it to be finished 46 inches. So I need to allow for a hem at the bottom and what I'm going to do for the hem is I'm going to add an inch so that I can fold it over twice at a half inch. Plus, I'm going to add an inch at the top so I can fold it over one inch. So I want to cut it at 48 inches total. Let's see, 55 minus 48 is 7 inches. So I need to cut 7 inches off of the top here, which is perfect because then that gives me a little extra fabric to use for trim around the skirt. there I have extra fabric to work with and I have my length of my skirt and now all I really have to do is 
literally take end from end to end and connect them. So here are my two ends and I'm gonna sew them together so there's only one seam that I have to do. And I'm gonna leave my raw edge for the hem because I'm gonna fold that twice. And I have, which is super cool because I have my selvage here and this will be the top of the skirt. So when I fold it over an inch, I don't have to hem it at the top. It'll be cleaned off already. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this will be hemmed and then this will be the top of the skirt. So I'm gonna do a French seam on this one. Um, that might seem kind of silly because I have a serger, but because this is silk, I kind of wanted to do it right. So see the link below on how I do my French seams, but I'm gonna go do that really quick and come back to the table. So what I did up here was I left unstitched nine inches so that I can actually open up the skirt and put it over my head. So I'm leaving that open and I started stitching nine inches down. Okay, so for this part, here is the opening that I left here and I did my French seam right here, as you can see. And this part, I'm literally going to just fold it over kind of like a rolled hem a little bit and finish it off. I'm gonna do that twice on both sides of the seams. So I brought it over to the machine and I'm going to stitch on top. My bobbin thread is the same color as the fabric mm -hmm. and I just have a basic gray for the inside. And I'm going to stitch right on top of there, all the way down. So this will clean off the opening edge here, like that. Open it up, I can put it on like that. And we're ready to do the hem at the bottom of the skirt. And I'm literally going to fold it over twice at a half an inch each. And as I hem the first row, I'm folding over the first row, I'll just clip off these little fuzzies as I go. And I'm ready to stitch up the hem. Just doing a slightly larger stitch. So I'm gonna do three, size three stitch. So that doesn't create too much rippling. I don't know if you can see that, but I actually folded it over one inch at the top of the skirt. This is the top and then the hem is at the other side down there. So I folded it under and this is the wrong side. I folded it to the wrong side. Okay, so the next step after, now that we've had all this folded up, we have our hem done. We need to, um, let's see. So we need to divide the skirt into four parts. So what we're gonna do is find the opening of your skirt here that we made. And that will be one part of the fourth. So that'll mark one part of the skirt. And we're gonna fold it all the way down. And I'm gonna put a pin in there. And then I'm going to fold these two. Fold it one more time and meet the opening with the pin over here. And that'll mark, you can mark both sides here. There's two pieces of fabric in here and once you fold it you'll mark both fabrics with a pin so that's basically dividing it into four like that making your four corners of the skirt and so the reason why i do that is because when we're making the pleats or the box pleats we're going to make them based on the fourth of the skirt so in one fourth of the skirt we're going to put two box pleats two sets of block box pleats so there will be a total of eight box pleats in the whole skirt so now when you open it up we have this one side which marks one corner and we have a pin that marks here and a pin that marks on the other side and then a pin that marks right here too so we have four parts of the skirt what I really like about what helps with making a pleat, a box pleat, is whenever I'm doing any pleats, I just stick this ruler underneath so I don't grab the under part. The ruler helps so that it, when you're pinning the pleats, it actually doesn't grab the other side of the skirt is what I was trying to explain here. 
So laugh at me again. I'm going to find the center of this half of a quarter. <laughs> What I did not show here is that I actually folded the quarter of the skirt in half and found the eighth, and that is what I'm measuring right here. The 23 inches is the eighth of the skirt, and I'm trying to find the center of the eighth of the skirt. 11 and 3 quarters is the half point, so we need, I need my box plates to be 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to divide that in half inch and just a little over 5 eighths. Here I'm measuring an inch and just over five eighths on each side of the pin, and the pin marks the center of my box pleat. So here's this the box pleat right here. And basically what I'm going to do is just grab right here, kind of eyeball it and make sure it's straight, and I'm gonna fold this under and meet the pin right here. So I have that, I folded it to the center of that pin right there. So it's like that. And then I'm gonna do that on the other side of the box plate as well. So I will basically grab this, fold it under like so and meet that pin in the middle and pin it in place. And then I'll measure to make sure that it is three and three eighths still down here and up here, because having it linear down here helps keep the skirt linear all over the place. If you just do it up here, you could have a lot of jagged lines, and then by the time you put on the mannequin, it doesn't look very uniform. So the key is to go a little bit further down and make sure it is all perfectly straight. And so you're basically going to just keep folding it until you're all the way to the pin there. So I'm gonna grab this side again, this side again, and fold it under like that. Make sure it's folded in the middle all the way and you're gonna take the pin that's on top here and put it back in like that. Make sure it's folded to the center all the way down and take your pins and repin them down with that second fold there. And you're gonna do that on the other side until you reach that pin. You might think I'm a little OCD about this, but this is hugely important to me to make sure these are straight. And then now we're going to grab this. And since we're close to the end of that pin right there, pull this over here to that pin. And don't worry if it meets the center. Well, it does anyway, so that works awesomely. So I'm going to repin that in place. So there's one set of box pleats. This is one eighth of the skirt right here. So we're gonna keep doing that until we go all the way around the skirt and we're gonna have eight of these box pleats. So here I have all the pleats completely pleated together and I'm ready to put the waistband on around it and then it will be finished and ready to put on the mannequin. So what I basically did is I created this waistband here and I didn't do a tutorial on this because I'm focusing on box pleats today. But basically what I did is I did my waist measurement and I added an inch and a half at the end and I marked it where my waist measurement is here with a pin. So from here where the pin is to this end is where I'm gonna pin the skirt to and then this will be extra overlapping so that it will be able to attach. So this is how I pin my box pleats to my waist. So basically I'll take, here's where my pin is right here. I'll put it on the outside so you can see. I take my pin here. And I just basically pin the skirt so that it's like a quarter inch. It's going to seem really weird, but it's going to be a quarter inch right here. So it's basically, you're just putting it on top of the waistband. You're not doing right sides together and then flipping it. So I will pin all the way around 
this skirt. Maybe pin this side. So pin the end over here. The key to having a really cool looking skirt is having everything linear. So making sure everything's stacked on each other correctly. Pin this. Maybe it might help to pin like that. Make sure it looks good on the outside because that's what's going to be showing. So when you pin it, make sure these folds are flat. So it might help to put a few pins on the outside too, just so you kind of know that it looks right. So actually, you know what? I may do that from around here just to make sure it looks good. So it ended up meeting in the back perfectly. I wasn't meaning to do that. However, I think it might look a little better in the back if I have it overlapping. Kind of hard to explain, but it'll cover up this a little bit more. I may regret it, but I actually think that might look pretty good. We'll see. So the next step is to hand stitch it. So now that it's all pinned in there, I'm gonna show you how I like to hand stitch it closed. So basically you start at the edge here, go all the way through those layers, and we're basically gonna whip stitch. It's gonna seem really odd, but it really is the best way to sew a Civil War skirt. Kind of thick layers, but you go through all of those layers there. If you can see that, and we'll do that all the way around the skirt, and then it will be done for the most part. Then we got to put the um, hooks and eyes or buttons. I'm still unsure as to what I want to do for that part. We'll see. So one warning. If you don't grab all the layers, this is what happens. So I'm going to have to go back and stitch that in there because that is not good news. Anyways, just a tip. So it's a little later and I got it all finished. So now I'm taking all of the pins out of my box plates and I'm ready to put it on the mannequin to see how it looks and see how it fits over my hoop skirt. Okay, so really just put it in the mannequin. And the slip goes in the back. The bottom of the waistband goes at the waist. All right, and then for the box pleats, I like to kind of straighten it out a little bit. Don't just let it go long. Just kind of part of getting dressed during the era, probably, was straightening out the pleats, I would think. There, it's overlapping in the back, which I feel like gives some pretty nice coverage because I've struggled with my other dresses on how to get some really nice coverage in the back. So I think that works out pretty nicely. And this is what the box plates look like. They're really fun to make. And I actually love how it's overlapping in the back. I don't regret that. So, I mean, once I put the attachment on of buttons or hooks and eyes, it should look a little more even. I like the extra coverage in the back and I'm really pleased with the overall look. So the next part is to trim up the bottom of the skirt. So the next video I'm about to make, and it is the next morning after I made the skirt. So today I am making the skirt, but I'm posting the video later. So you'll have to hit the subscribe button so you can watch that video on how I do the trim on the bottom of the skirt. It'll be super fun. So like this video and I will see you next time.